Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the ABIS number 24 IB forward slash 70. This is a what they call a discus uh, lock. We call it a disc style padlock. Um, if you use your imagination, you can certainly see why it might be considered a disc style padlock, I suppose. Um, this is preferred by people. You know, customers would walk in in our retail environment. They'd say they'd want one of those disc padlocks or it'd be the hockey puck padlock. That's the other one. That one's not by Avis. Although I'm sure Avis must make one. But they like this disc style because it is awfully hard to get pipe or bolt cutters, I should say, onto this. You know, when you put that onto something, you don't have a lot of room to get any sort of tool on there to work that padlock off. That's why people like this. That's, that's what I've been told, okay? It is what we call key retaining. You can only remove the key when it's in the locked position. I can't take it out otherwise, okay? This padlock weighs about 0.67 pound, and let's take a couple of basic dimensional properties. Overall diameter, about two and three quarter. Overall thickness, looks like it's about five eighths of an inch, okay? One other, a couple of other points. The diameter of the shackle, 0 0.381, 0 0.381 inch. Then the width up here, 0 0.813, 0 0.813, right in here. Okay. Now uh, that's what uh, that's why people like this. That's what it's primarily specified to be used as. You're going to get this into some sort of a uh, application where you know, you'll have probably a, a shroud over that so you're really not able to get to the tool, uh, get your tool to that to cut that off at all. I like this model because it has a rain shield on it as well or as a dust cover really is what that is. It snaps in place. Okay, And then a couple of original keys. EE0252, you'll notice that in the part number. That's because that's the, the indirect code for the bidding on the key. That doesn't tell us really much about this key, uh, except that that's the code. So if you have this disk padlock already in your installation, and you want two more or 20 more or whatever it is, and you want them to be the same key, specify the 24IB uh, slash 70B EE0252. Okay. That's what that's for. Let's switch to the screen view now and let's take a closer look at the supporting information. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Okay, here's the item that we are indeed looking at. Uh, there's our padlock. Some factory images here, made in Germany. It's also going to tell you that it's on the back side, uh, which they don't have a picture of. Stainless precision, stainless precision, 360 degree protection. And that's where they're really coming from. Something like this, you can't get your tool down to that. Okay, we've made that point abundantly clear. Let's look at some images that we have taken. There's the box. That's what's in the box. Let's look at just a few more. An up close view of the broaching in the cylinder plug itself. That's what's called a paracentric keyway. That's because there are protrusions that cross over the vertical uh, axis, paracentric. That's the curvy shape to this. That's an ad ad advantageous feature to broachings and cylinders, it's a little difficult, pardon me, it's a bit more difficult to manipulate that. If you look at a Yale catalog from the 19th century, they did not have much in the way of paracentric keyways. In fact, their feather key was just a flat uh, type key, the very, very early in the pin tumbler lock era, uh, Civil War time, you know, just after the Civil War, in fact, you'd see a feather key. It was a flat. There was no uh, grooved or milled or broached nature like this at all. Showing the unit open. 
A couple of pictures showing it open, I guess. The backside, stainless precision. 360 degree protection, Avis, that is a German company. And there are your two keys. Being a German company, what does that really mean? Um, I don't know. I don't know what that means exactly, but when I think of European lock manufacturers, they have a dizzying array of high security cylinder platforms. The Europeans have taken, in the United States, we have secure, patented, restricted, protected keyways, key systems, Medeco, Schlage, Sargent, Corbin Ruswin, Yale, every major manufacturer has it. The Europeans have, have really, uh, especially the Germans, they've done a lot of extremely detailed steps in the evolutionary process of securing a cylinder. So much to the point where I think, <laughs> I wouldn't say they've overdone it, but their engineering allows them advantages at a certain level that you may or may not be able to actually justify. Um, that does allow them to stand at the top of a, of, of a pinnacle of, of having the most advanced keyways. It was Dom, another manufacturer who had a movable element, and that patent was, is a few decades old. Just a brilliant design. Um, you're really not going to be picking those locks open at all. Uh, and uh, needless to say, Abus will have security keyways as well, really preventing you from duplicating key blanks. And that's the crux of the matter. If you can't get your hands on the key blank, you're probably not going to be able to cut the key blank. And if you can't otherwise fabricate one uh, because it's too complicated and that movable element is there to thwart 3D printing. And when DOM had a movable element, it was well before any era of movable elements. And fast forward to the year 2021 or 2020, um, that movable element's been introduced into a medical, their medical four platform. And again, meant to thwart uh, 3D printing. Well, back to the task at hand here. Extended description information. All round security, the discus lock is a special form of padlock with extra advantages. The shape of the discus lock provides effective prote protection against the most common ways of gaining entry. The design of the small shackle opening means that there's hardly any space for attacks on the shackle. Uh, it's made of primarily stainless steel. It's used particularly where security and protection against corrosion are required. Trucks, doors, gates, barns, cellars, sheds, etc. can all be locked with this. Should ideally be used with the Abus Discus hasp so that the lock shackle cannot be attacked with tools. And then again, that image that we had right here shows it pretty well. It's a pretty, pretty smart layout that they have there. Extended description information. I'm just scanning it to see if there's anything that we've not spoken about. Weather resistant, key retaining we talked about. In the world of padlocks, there are levels. This is a level eight that is fairly high on the level list. Dimensions. When you buy one, we'll ship you one. Here's a link to the data sheet. Let's take a closer look at that. Really just a cut sheet. It's going to say all the same sort of information that we've already discussed. Now let's take a look at the link below this video as seen here to the manufacturer's page. And from here, we can pull up not only all of the ABIS products that we sell by means of this horizontal navigation, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the most current catalog. They do have their discus material here. If you caught that on the cut sheet, they did list other sizes. And here's how the part number changes. 50, 60, or 70. I would imagine that's got everything to do with millimeters, would be my guess. Um, or thereabouts. Seems to hold. Uh, other information is going to obviously be uh, in the catalog regarding this material. I think it's a pretty handy sort of document so that you can review all things ABIS security, a name that's been associated with padlocks for, cent for centuries, for decades for sure. Lots of other hardware, the typical laminated steel padlocks that you'll see all over the place. I happen to be 
partial to Avis. I believe in these low cost laminated steel padlocks that they make a really good version of it, meaning it seems to work very solidly and have a nice fit and finish. Their fit and finish does seem to be superior to the people they compete against. You know, padlocks are something that people don't give a lot of thought to, but they're very much a part of process control. Controlling who has rights and privileges over things other than doors. You know, process control equipment. In this case, um, obviously being able to attach multiple locks to a given unit so multiple people have to provide uh, authorization to get through that. Other ways to lock material up as well. You, know, you can see an example here. You've got these two valves. In order to get those valves turned, you've got to have four different keys, presumably four different people, to all agree to open those valves. Not a lot of people have these types of solutions. So if you're dealing with an industrial control, manufacturing control, you're looking for ways to lock some of that stuff, maybe dive into this. Um, because they, they have a lot of, they have solutions, that's for sure. Uh, just scrolling through, now we're into the more generic uh, padlocks, brass body padlocks, combination padlocks, etc. Hasps are down here. We certainly do sell these hasps uh, occasionally, these multi-elbow versions to get around weird corners, you know, three angled corners, uh, etc. Lots of neat items here. Let's wrap up this video on camera. If you've not hit subscribe yet, we would very much appreciate if you did, and hopefully you're enjoying this video. Now, let's get back to it. In conclusion, if you have any questions on the Discus Padlock or any other Avis product, please feel free to reach out to us. Lots of solutions in that catalog. Hopefully, pointing out where we've hidden that catalog is of some use to you as well. Any questions on this or any other Avis product, please feel free to reach out to us, and thank you. Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up, please subscribe, and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.